So we move on to another case. Uh, this is a 62-year-old female who presented with blood in the urine. Uh, initially, she was treated for a bladder infection, uh, but uh, the bleeding persisted. So she was evaluated further and was found to have uh, kidney cancer. We'll look at the images in a, in a minute. But her past history, she has reflux symptoms, diabetes, uh, <clears throat> and she is in excellent health otherwise. She has no symptoms related to the cancer. But the laboratory inv investigation shows this is a blood test called lactate dehydrogenase. When it's elevated, it, uh, it indicates a, a high tumor burden. The upper uh, limit of normal in our lab is 618, so this is more than twice uh, the higher than the upper limit of normal. Uh, this is a function of the uh, filtration of the kidney. It's called uh, estimated GFR, glomerular filtration rate. As we heard this morning, the normal is uh, 60 and above. This is clearly a reduced uh, filtration rate, so she has compromised kidney function, but the rest of her labs are uh, within normal limits, and there is no evidence of metastatic disease to bone or brain by these imaging studies. And here is her uh, scan, and you could see a very large uh, mass uh, in the, uh, arising from the right kidney. And uh, what would you do, Dr. Karam? Uh, the mass looks unusual in its configuration, and you could see part of the right kidney, it looks like it's uh, devascularized almost, uh, the lower part, and it's replacing the actual kidney itself, and there's also some enlarged no nodes behind the vena cava and between the vena cava and the uh, aorta, and I can't tell what's going on with the adrenal yet, but it is a bit unusual, and this is someone I would uh, probably recommend a biopsy before we proceed with any further therapies. Dr. Mati, do you recommend there is no metastatic disease? Yeah, so, you know, I think the biopsy is, is an intriguing option uh, and I think reasonable, you know, for the reasons Dr. Kara mentions. Um, the, the thing is, you think about doing surgery and, you know, you're going to remove all visible disease, so why not? Um, the problem is when it's in the lymph nodes, um, you know, if it's clear cell, it's not really going to be curative. Um, if it's something else, um, you know, or if it has sarcomatoid, then even less so. Uh, so, I mean, I don't want to get overly technical in terms of all those different things. But, you know, I, I actually think biopsy is pretty reasonable. Okay, well, <clears throat> this is her CAT scan of the chest. And she has uh, here enlarged lymph nodes. Oh, she does have metastatic disease. In the chest, yes. Oh, there are, okay. So there are enlarged lymph nodes in the chest. Yeah. And again, here is, we see the mass in the right kidney. Now, with this information, uh, large mass in the right kidney, enlarged lymph nodes uh, near the right kidney, uh, and these lymph nodes in the chest, uh, how would your management uh, change? Uh, Dr. Mati? I'd feel even better about doing a biopsy. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Wood, you agree? Or would um, you go straight to surgery? No, I, I actually, I don't agree. I, I think that, um, you know, the, again, the vast majority of this patient's disease is in her abdomen um, and is surgically resectable, albeit, you know, it would be a big surgery. Um, she has an excellent performance status. She, there's really no contraindications to doing surgery. Uh, and so I would go with a right radical nephrectomy and resect the nodal disease that's present in the retroperitoneum. Uh, and then allow her to recover and reassess and then decide on systemic therapy based on the histology of the primary tumor. Okay, we'll hear it from the medical oncologist, uh, Dr. Pile. Would you do a biopsy uh, as recommended by Dr. Mateen and Dr. Karam? And then I, 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 uh, how would that change your approach? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's right or wrong, but I would, I would probably go with Dr. Wood to do the surgery. Um, I, I don't see I mean, my concern always is whether this is a urothelial carcinoma or other um, more rare type of kidney cancer, but, um, you know, primarily the tumor is in the kidney, and this patient is relatively symptomatic. I would take the kidney out. Dr. Harrison, you agree? So is your first? Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's always the concern it's some unusual histology, but I agree with the, okay. the side reductive. All right. So she underwent a right radical nephrectomy and resection of all the lymph nodes that are visible at the time of surgery, the pathology, consistent with what you suspected, a rare uh, kidney cancer. That's called translocation, carcinoma of the kidney. 
Uh, we refer to it as XP11.2. And, uh, uh, you know, we know she has metastatic disease. That's the M1. The nodes are maker N1 and the T3A. 17 of 18 lymph nodes removed were positive for metastasis, tumor involvement with extranodal extension. Now, what do you recommend, Dr. Pile? You, you suspected she may have a um, rare tumor. Uh, would your systemic therapy now be influenced by the pathology? Um, Nazar, could you just explain the importance of or what the significance of extranodal extension is for, for the patient? Yeah, extranodal extension of lymph nodes uh, is uh, a worse, carries a worse prognosis than uh, if the nodes are still confined. So even though she, uh, she had a resection of all the lymph nodes, that uh, carries a, a worse prognosis. Um, Dr. Pile, the pathology now uh, indicating this rare tumor type, does that influence your selection of systemic therapy? Well, this is a challenging case because this is a really very rare uh, kidney cancer, and uh, we, we don't know what's the best uh, uh, option for the patient. Of course, a surgery um, is probably the best uh, option, um, but that's, it, it hasn't really solved the issue here. Uh, there are some, I believe, some case reported about mTOR inhibitors in this, um, in this kidney cancer type. But I would, uh, because we don't know how to treat it, um, I'm a little bit positive. Usually these are younger patients. She's 62. Usually we do see this in, in younger, in younger patients. Um, and more, uh, more visceral metastasis than lymph node metastasis. But um, it is what it is. So I, I would still probably treat it with a drug that we have for advanced kidney cancer. Um, chemotherapy sometimes is offered in this case, but you know, unless it's, the disease is growing very rapidly and it, it has a good involvement in the liver, the lungs, I, I, would, I would treat it with uh, standard drugs. Dr. Harrison, is there a role for R2 here in this lady with this uh, tumor type? I think it's unknown, but I, I doubt I, I wouldn't use IL-2. So as uh, the panelist mentioned, this is a rare kidney tumor, but uh, now it's estimated that 1% of adults with renal cell carcinoma uh, have this type. So when uh, you do what we call FISH on these tumors, you diagnose the translocation in 1%. So uh, it's still rare, 1% is rare. Uh, interleukin-2 is not recommended for patients with non-clear cell uh, types, but only for the clear cell, so I agree. I think. Uh, a high dose interleukin-2 is not an option here. And uh, the prognosis of these tumors, uh, if they're older, and again, again Dr. Pile uh, made the point uh, that these are usually seen in pediatric ages, adolescents and young adults, uh, and rarely in older people. They do present with bulky disease and uh, lymph node metastasis, uh, and they are treated as we treat other uh, types preferably on a clinical trial. And uh, we have a clinical trial at MD Anderson for non-clear cell, as well as the Duke uh, group is leading a uh, study for these patients. They're calling it the ASPEN trial, and it's looking at uh, uh, treating those patients uh, into two groups, one group with uh, Everolimus, an mTOR inhibitor, one group with Sunitinib, and uh, we have the same trial. We call it ESPN trial and it's Everolimus versus Sunitinib, again, for these patients with these rare tumors. Dr. Tanir, if I was able to convince you and have a biopsy done and show translocation, what would be the recommendation at the time? Would you- Surgery. Still up surgery? Yes. So let, me, so let me just stir the pot a little bit. So what, what on the biopsy would tell you not to do surgery? If it's sarcomatoid or if it's translocation? You're saying do surgery with translocation. I know, but- I might not want to. Well, I think so. uh, then he's you know, the, just sent it to me. That comes, and I think, <laughs> so I mean, because the question is, well, are we benefiting the patient yeah. by doing surgery with this type of aggressive histology? And I don't know if we know the answer to that at this point. Well, the, I mean, that's the challenge, is that this is such a rare histology that, you know, we can't look at the last 500 patients that had translocation tumor because we don't have 500 patients. And, you know, I think in the absence of, um, you know, effective systemic therapy that, you know, radical tumor debulking you know, represents this patient's best chance at having some sort of prolongation of life. I think if you look, if you extrapolate from the pediatric literature, uh, translocation in uh, young uh, 
uh, adults or uh, pediatrics uh, children uh, when it's always the, the the approach has been before all these target therapies came uh, to existence was to do multiple uh, resections the resection obviously nephrectomy and then removing lymph nodes and continuing to do go on and doing successive uh, resections and these patients live many years um, and the prognosis is better when uh, you're able to uh, perform surgery so in this uh, in her case uh, it is you know she's lucky i believe that she presented with resectable disease at the time of initial diagnosis that she's able to get the bulk of her disease out 